analyzed everything I could find for what changes after defeating Ganon, so players, some of us that took years doing everything in the game before beating it, actually have something new to check out. You may not know that Breath of the Wild has a hidden point tracker running in the background, and players who decide to do the game's boss rush, beating all four Blights before taking on Ganon, don't actually earn any additional points for the Blights themselves, don't free the Divine Beast it was attached to, or get the respective champion's ability. And the game, of course, resets itself afterwards, awarding players with a specific amount of points, as the final quest sneakily uncompletes itself, giving you back all of your stuff as if you never did anything. But some things do change, like an enormous hunting quest to find is unlocked, several more cool game trackers show up, some characters have some new things to link to see, along with something players should know that changes their entire experience of the game. The first major change to happen after defeating Ganon, other than this amazing star that goes next to your save file, that totally makes the entire game worth it by itself, is if Link tracks down Kilton in his traveling shop, he will grant Link three extra quests that has him hunting down every single one of the game's mini-bosses, giving him something special for each of them. This separates into Link having to hunt down the four Moldugas for the Molduga medal, all 40 Henoxes for a Henox medal, and then another 40 Stone Taluses for the Stone Talus medal. Make sure that you talk to Kilton about each monster hunt separately to begin its respective metal hunt, and Lionels do not count as a mini-boss, but instead help out with something special the game is keeping track of, hidden in the background. Luckily, if Link has already defeated a mini-boss, then our favorite star, along with the defeated text, comes up alongside the enemy's health bar. Upon defeating every one of a type of mini-boss, Link can again talk to Kilton, who will excitingly sniff Link to see if he's actually done it, awarding him with a Medal of Honor for that monster. This medal cannot be worn, does nothing, and instead merely takes up a spot in Link's inventory for him to just stare and reminisce at, much like those really old trophies you have lying around. Other than the lengthy Medals of Honor to hunt down, you will also be awarded with an extra icon to place on your map, which should make it easier to hunt all the enemies down. But much more important than that is several percentage trackers will now be unlocked within the game, allowing you to track your progress for each one of them. The first to unlock is the Map Percentage Tracker. This tracker does not count for quests, shrines, memories, bosses, treasure chests, pictures, or inventory upgrades, but instead solely tracks the hardest task by far that Link could do in the entire game, being exactly how much of the overworld map itself Link has completed. This means that Link needs to just discover and not have to beat the game's 120 shrines that makes up 10% of the tracker, has to separately activate the travel gates for all four divine beasts that shows up on the map, and then beat them so they move to their new spots on the map that adds a whopping 0.66%. Has to discover the game's 15 Sheikah Towers, totaling 1.24%, discover the game's 164 locations for 13.58%, and then hunt down and go through their respective funhouse for all 900 Koroks scattered around the map. That makes up nearly 75% of the completion tracker. Then we have our second new tracker that shows up that allows Link to know exactly how many of the game's quests he has and hasn't beaten for each of the main shrine and side quests. So now you can hop endlessly around the map wondering where the heck that one person could be whose quest you just never found. And you may notice that the destroyed Ganon quest remains forever incomplete, meaning no one can ever 100% this game, ever. If you decide to trek to the Hurtano lab, Simon, not knowing you already killed Ganon, will break out his special elite enemy pictures for you to buy for your compendium. If you didn't happen to snag them during the battle, like the bosses that you can no longer obtain if you already defeated them at the Divine Beast, and also so the game doesn't spoil them by giving them to you until you've seen them, along with silver and golden enemies being available to buy, although things like the Master Sword and Bow of Light need to be taken yourself. And before I give you the thing players should know, that might give you plenty of more playtime and goals to achieve, what doesn't change is Ganon is and will always be alive, and PCs around the map will still have the same dialogue telling you to fix things and save the world, all the game's quests will stay the same, and the defeat Ganon quest won't change, but you will still get a star, with your most recent autosave being in front of the last boss fight as if nothing ever happened, meaning you can turn your bum around and continue playing the rest of the game, and any quest you may have missed, so beating Ganon early doesn't
doesn't mean that you actually miss out on anything in the game. It would have been cool to see how the NPCs and everyone would act knowing Ganon was gone, and possibly seeing Castletown being rebuilt, instead of people telling Link to hurry the f*** up, but this allows players to experience parts of the story they may have missed. For those of us who didn't scrape every last thing out of the game before beating it, and totally aren't just beating its finale now, before it gets added to a list of other uncompleted games. Now something players should know that fundamentally adds a layer to their experience of the game, as well as new goals for them to achieve, is hidden in the game's background is an experience or XP tracker that has been running since the start of the game, detailing and scoring every encounter you've ever had, with the guide's message that higher level versions of each species, distinguished by their different colors, only appear if you eliminate many of their peers, being somewhat misleading, as these points are in reality added to an ongoing universal counter that continually evolves enemies into harder variations of themselves once certain thresholds are reached, no matter what enemies you defeat. However, it seems that once you defeat any given enemy type to a grand total of 10 times, killing any more of them will no longer contribute to the counter, with different variations of enemies like elemental variants of enemies are all considered separate from each other, and can be killed 10 times each, but this does not apply to purely cosmetic variations, such as the differently colored stone taluses that all act and fight with the same abilities. Strangely, an enemy counts as defeat at any time it poofs away by any means when Link is around, whether Link was the one to defeat them or not, with an enemy considered to have been beaten the moment its body explodes, turns into steam, or otherwise melts, and not a moment sooner. So if you leave that Molduga before it's through its death animation, it does not count towards your total. Enemies are upgraded through either gaining higher level variations that increases their health, gaining higher level weapons, and through having their AI upgraded, making them more intelligent. While I've seen several different ways to score these points, I'm just going to use a basic point system based off of the ones I saw that make sense. With a total of around 11 levels and over 1,200 points, we can see that defeating Ganon on your first try nets you around 150 points, enough to level enemies up from level 0, past the 60-ish needed to reach level 1, and the 160-ish to reach level 2, turning Bokoblins into blue variants, and the same with Moblins. As for what each individual enemy type is worth, we can observe from the level counter, and how many of each it would take to reach a certain level, a rough estimate of what they most likely are, with regular Bokoblins and Moblins being worth so little they almost count as zero, Wiz Robes being worth one point, Black Moblins, Stone Talus, and Henox being three points, as their rare and blue Henox variations go up two to three points, Guardian Stalkers and Lynels starting at ten points, scaling to twenty-four for Silver Lynels, and bosses being worth sixty points. Also, passing certain story missions like seeking out Impa, defeating the Yiga Clan's Master Koga, or turning the Thunderhelm to Riju automatically levels you up to level one or two if you haven't already reached them. And interestingly, the game's dragons Dinral and Farouche won't appear until the Seek Out Impa quest is first fulfilled, while disguised members of the Yiga Clan won't spawn in the overworld until the counter has reached level one, with Blade Masters and Foot Soldiers only spawning at level two. But before you go out and start mashing different enemies, this would be incomplete without mentioning that the game's many weapons found in the overworld also level up with a counter, receiving a random blue and then yellow modifier upgrade, or upgrading to a better version of themselves. But if none of this was very interesting, then here's the actual theory. You know what I'm gonna do about this? What? Nothing! Because if I take it to small claims court, it'll just drain eight hours out of my life, and you probably won't show up. But if you're left wondering what's going on with the next Zelda game, then check out this video. See you in the next one.